Hello, welcome back to the Waffle Fresh Podcast. We celebrate Thanksgiving. So today on the show, we want to talk a little bit about why Thanksgiving is kind of gross and weird. It's really weird that we celebrate that holiday, but yeah, first, I will introduce my co-hosts. Hi, Nick. How are you? My name is Nick Valero. Is Nick Valero? Is Nick I know. Why did I say Nick Nick Valero. You don't smoke weed. What's wrong with you? Anymore. Okay. And then here's Gene. Gene Versa. Hey. Another co-host. Yeah. How was your guys' Thanksgiving? It was good. Yeah. Was I was uh yeah it was a nice quiet family dinner. Yeah. I was a little disappointed I wasn't um I wasn't on the Harry Potter episode about. I'm sorry. Talking about that. I'm glad problematic. I'm glad you're you're okay. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. Also behind the camera is our friend Raph. Thank you for helping out today. It's kind of the last thing of production. But let's let's get right into it. Thanksgiving, we celebrate it because right. a bunch of white people killed a bunch of Native Americans. That's really, that, that's not the the reason we celebrate it. Right. You know, as a kid, you grow up learning like, oh, the Pilgrims and the, the, the Native Americans they came together and had a wonderful feast and all was well. One, one time. One time. Um, <laughs> it's the only time. So like I we talked about it before on the show. Talk, I've talked about it a lot with friends and family. Just like. For a while, I was like, why aren't there any, like, good Thanksgiving movies? And now, like, in hindsight, it's like, well, it's a really weird holiday to celebrate. I think the one, like, enlightening one is kind of, uh, or not even enlightening, but, like, just really good is Planes, Trains, and Automobiles yeah. with the great John Candy and Steve Martin. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a, it's a fun, well-to-do, cute little movie. Uh, John Candy, R.I.P., was one of the most likable actors ever. Um, but a while ago, she and I brought up to you, we were planning these shows out, that I was like, oh, Thor Ragnarok, in a weird way, not directly about the themes of Thanksgiving, but the actual lesson about Thanksgiving is that, you know, imperialism and colonialism are bad. Yes. And they will blow up a planet, because that's the only way to redeem yourself after shedding generations of blood. And I think that's an important Genocide. lesson to take away. Yeah. Genocide is also bad, right. and you should not do it. Mine is Pocahontas. Yeah, Pocahontas. Yeah, if you look at that, it's like, man, that's... Pocahontas so is, like, such a weird Disney movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, like, it's totally just, like, up and down, up and down, very sanitized. <laughs> but then there's, like, weird hints of, like... Yeah, also, the movie almost ends with a beheading. Happened. The movie almost ends with a beheading. Yeah. They threatened to behead somebody. A lot of 90s <laughs> Disney movies were very tonally <laughs> all over the place. There's some great stuff They're, in like, there. really, like, oh, singing, and then it's like, oh, man, that's dark. Yeah, like, uh, the villain Pocahontas is, like, this wonderful song and dance number... And it's like, he's very clearly the villain, but it's like, that's, I don't know what I'm supposed to be getting out of that. Because you're trying to make a fun song with a dude who's like, not historically fun. No. That is just literal genocide. He's, he's a genocidal, like, maniac. It's weird. Yeah, it's like, it's weird. That's, that's very weird. But there's a raccoon. There's a cute raccoon. There, a there's hummingbird. amazing hummingbird. animation. Yeah. You know? I think, I think that's the also... Actress, like, actually Native American. I actually I don't know. No, actually, I think, I'm pretty sure she's a... It was the 90s in Disney, and they did not really do that That's not good. often. So I'm sorry to That's a good question. everyone. Um, but, so I want to talk about some maybe some movies that would fit into that category. Uh, again, Thor Ragnarok, mm-hmm. I thought was a great deconstruction of that kind of ideal. Not inherently uh, Thanksgiving, but similar topics about like yeah. how uh, nations might kind of sweep some stuff under the rug oh, okay. and be like, look, we're all great and... You know, wonderful, and we never had any problems, and we all get along <laughs> just fine. Right. And that doesn't really uh, occur Not really. with these kind of things. But uh, let's also talk about some stuff we are thankful for, because it, yeah. it's a gross holiday. But if there's anything we can try to change, let's take the time to remember to be thankful for some things. Yeah. You know. Can I ask Nick one question? Off yeah, sure. Nick, what do you think of the Goku? Uh, the the Goku uh, parade balloon for Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. That makes sense. <laughs> I mean, it, no, I, I thought it was really cool. Uh, what was it? The, Al the, Roker couldn't pronounce any of the names. Yeah, uh, I, I just think it's really funny. Uh, I, I like the fact that anime is becoming like bigger and bigger. Everyone is cheering culture. for Goku. Yeah, everybody's cheering. Well, we're going to see a lot of a change in pop culture because our generation, well, already they're pandering to us with like reboots of the same movies yeah. in different mediums, which is mm-hmm. dumb mm-hmm. Uh, and bad and yeah. cynical. But like, we're going to see a lot of interesting, positive aspects of that because like, yeah, anime is popular enough to be in the Macy's Day Thanksgiving Parade yeah, now. Yeah, that's great. And Pokemon, that's hilarious. And you Pokemon. You pronounce it E... What do you pronounce it? E-V-S? Eve. 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 I, I, I didn't see it, but and I did see the Super, the super Saiyan. Saiyan. Yeah, Super no, but, Saiyan. But it does, but it, does make, but it makes sense because... Um, Broly? In January, in January, there's going to be a new movie that's coming out <laughs> yeah, from Dragon Ball. Yeah, I want to see that. And then also the video games for... Uh, 
what was Pokemon. it? Pokemon. Pokemon just came Detective out. So, Pikachu, yeah, so. Detective Pikachu, the trailer just came out. So right. only makes sense. Sorry for uh, taking a big flop topic. No, no, I mean... Technically we're thank keeping, thankful it's, for it's you guys are thankful for anime. Thankful for anime. Yeah. Maybe deep down I am. Anime maybe I'm wife. not. He's never gonna be thankful for anime. You I'm thankful. Anime. I'm thankful for Cowboy Bebop and Satoshi Kon movies. Yeah. So. It's not really anime. Uh, watch you Perfect Blue. Anime. Watch Perfect Blue. Everyone, it's a very good movie. Yeah. Not yeah. Thanksgiving related. You can't like anime if you've only seen one. <laughs> I've seen more than one. <laughs> you, what, you the, what the fuck? You're like, who's this Goku? Does he fight? I, I used to watch Dragon Ball and Cartoon like, Network. Yeah, it's like, no, he but, doesn't fight. He, like, eats, and then he panders for, like, two or five episodes doing nothing, powering up. The and then only, he fights. The only moment I actively remember from, like, Dragon Ball, like, beat for beat, everything kind of just washed over yeah. me as I got older, because I didn't keep up with it like you guys, uh, was when Goku was still a kid with his little monkey tail, yeah. and he got a taxi to go to Bulma's house in the city, mm -hmm. and he, the taxi driver was like, all right, where are you heading, kid? I'm heading to Bulma's house. All right, where is that? I'm not sure yet. <laughs> and so that that always just stuck with me for whatever reason. I thought that's yeah. the cutest thing. Yeah, well, yeah, like I don't actually hate anime. I just yeah. like. Is your, is your favorite anime Hamtaro? Hamtaro. Hamtaro. No, but I remember yeah. Fox Kids, and I remember Hamtaro, Little Hamsters, Big Adventures. Yeah, Big Adventures. Anyway, Hamtaro. what were we talking about? Uh, thankful. Things we're thankful for. Oh, okay. So we're still technically like, kind of on topic. Yeah, we're okay. still on topic. Yeah, well, movies, TV shows. Okay. Comics, video games. Uh, I'm I, I'm thankful that um, it's only two more weeks until I get to see the crossover event on CW. Oh, oh yeah, CW, DC TV. I'm yes. not caught up on anything. It's I'm glad they acknowledge like Batman exists in their universe. Uh, apparently he's been, um, he's, been he's been he's been missing for three years. That's interesting. I wonder if that's that's not like a parallel or. No, they said it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be Earth One. It's gonna be Earth so everyone one. except Superman exists on Earth One. Everybody, well, I don't. <laughs> It maybe Superman has a land. Superman and Supergirl don't don't exist in the the Flash Arrow yeah, no, direct no. universe, right? Yeah. So like yeah, they, no, uh, not in Earth One. They they exist on Earth Thirty Two. Okay. Earth uh, S. I haven't caught up on any of them, but I am also delighted to watch that because the crossovers have always that's been the only thing I stick delightful. Oh, you know what? That's a lie. Uh, Legends of Tomorrow. I started catching up on Legends of Tomorrow. And this is fun. The Legends of Tomorrow is my favorite one because it's just like. Fuck all this, like, convoluted, like, time travel nonsense. Like, we have time travel, but also, the first episode of our season, we're going to fight a magical unicorn that impales people and eats their hearts. <laughs> Isn't it a beast? At Woodstock. <laughs> or like a that Bebo? is the most amazing episode of television yeah, I've ever Bebo? seen. Bebo, the god of war. Well, I, I think, uh, I, I really like the idea of adding a new character like Constantine into, like, yeah, the mix. Yeah, yeah. Different he's, a, he's, a, he's, a nice, he's a nice little foil to everybody where, like, Everybody now has to deal with Constantine. Yeah. And he just doesn't like anyone. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's great, because for a while that was Mick. Yeah. And then he's he, like, he's, he begrudgingly deeply Constant, cares about everyone. Yeah. Has yeah. Constantine, like, hooked up with anyone? Yeah. yeah he's, well, he hooked up with Sarah. And he's uh, also, he, he also uh, hooked up with one of the uh, guys in the Time Bureau. Yeah, okay. Oh, uh, what's his face? Gary. Thank you. The Virgin Gary. Yeah. And then he even <laughs> says, like, wait, what we did, what doesn't count as sex? And he's like, no. <laughs> Uh, a man who would eventually get his nipple bitten off by the <laughs> evil unicorn. <laughs> Look, if you're not watching Legends of Tomorrow, you're doing you yourself be. a disservice. Cause... You definitely should. And you don't have to watch any of the other ones. Well, yeah, except I... for one of the crossovers for that. That's yeah, just fine. I mean, That's fine. Yeah, I guess. But yeah, I'm really excited for the crossover. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, for people that don't aren't, aren't aware of the crossover this year, uh, do you want to give a quick synopsis? Yes, it is uh, It is called Elseworlds. It is very... The comic series. Yeah, but uh, it's apparently going to stay inside of their... Uh, situation but it's going to be that Barry and Oliver wake up one morning and they are in each other's lives they, uh, they switch yeah they yeah. switch they switch bodies and abilities and uh, what was it uh, what was it Stephen Amell is now the Flash and Grant Gustin is now the Green Arrow and they have to go on an adventure of figuring out how the hell this happened and that leads them to Kara Superman Batman uh, Batwoman and Arkham Asylum oh and, they're going to Arkham Asylum yeah because Doctor Destiny is the big bit. This is. I didn't know any of this. I'm. am more excited now than I was before. This is great. Yeah, it's gonna be better than the Justice League. It's movie. gonna be. Uh, oh yeah. Well, no, it's gonna be Doctor Destiny, and then the even bigger villain that's like incorporating the is uh, the Monitor and Black Suit Superman. It's gonna be an evil Superman. Oh. So it is gonna be what the Justice League. <laughs> Very interesting. Very. And it's I'm gonna. Really and like that. The, it's and gonna. It, it has a black suit before the cinematic universe. Yeah. Oh, there was gonna be one. And right. it's gonna have a black suit Superman fight. Uh, regular. Superman. Someone asked Zack Snyder about it on Bureau. <laughs> no. Look, I'm, I'm, have I'm, you seen all the memes I'm for Zack Snyder? I'm deeply apologetic to Zack Snyder. He's had a very yeah. rough couple years. 
stop sure. posting about your movie that didn't get made, man. I'm yeah, sorry. No, like, so people like stop. Your fan base is like a cult. You need to like get stop. them in check. <laughs> stop encouraging them. But yeah. uh, but the other cool thing is that uh, you're gonna have multiple versions of the Flash. So uh, the original. The original. Oh yeah, that from, I did from see. the '90s is coming back, and also uh, they're gonna be shooting on the Kent Farm, which is the Smallville set. Somebody save me. Uh, Smallville is not, if you ever check out Smallville, not great, Definitely. but uh, it has moments and the finale, like the final moments are, are yeah. really cute. And yeah, if you're a so Superman fan, you'll, you'll have a lot so of yeah, so the, So literally this one was just like, how many things can we throw into like an episode okay. one and, <laughs> crossover? And they, they, their legends are not in this one, and apparently uh, the last crossover with every character and it was like amazing. Mm -hmm. It was it, it was it felt like an Avengers style movie. Yeah, I it like wonder. broke every one of our time. Oh really? Because it, it was just so much to pack just, in. Just scheduling yeah, all and the everything. Poor, like, and all really. the poor PAs. And yeah, it, it yeah, story editors. Editors. yeah from PAs to they were the still starring filming, cast and crew. Because they were they also just, still filming their shows too. Like yeah. it wasn't just like oh yeah like we get to take a break. It's like we still have to like do other things. Yeah. So it's pretty awesome. So it it it, it broke them. Severely, yeah. and they, uh, uh, I don't, I don't mind if they don't, never do one as big as that again. No. Let's just do some fun stuff, you know, they, some one-offs. That'd be kind of cool. They said when they, they said like there's gonna be like maybe like one or two legends characters that like show up as like things. Yeah, this is a, this is oh, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, is this the third one, right? What? This is the fourth crossover. Well, technically, it'd be the fourth what was the one crossover. What was, the one? what was the one with the aliens? That was the second one. That was the second one. one. Okay, that was the, the third the one? The very third first one was uh, Earth X. Yeah. Oh, and that's for the Nazis. Yeah. yeah. Nazis, yeah. yeah. Which uh, is timely. Timely, timely. Timely, timely. Uh, the first one was just a simple one with, like, Barry and, the, and um, Oliver just kind of, like, teaming up on, like, little one-off mysteries. It was I the kinda, bra they called it the Brave and the Bold. Yeah, cute, yeah. cute. If, if they do more crossovers, which I think they they plan to, Yeah. yeah uh, I'd like, I like small-scale stuff, you know? Like, my, one of my favorite things about Earth X was just that the first hour is just them hanging out, like getting drunk at a at a pre wedding yeah, ceremony, and then like just enjoying just time. heroes being dudes. Yeah, just what, people. Just, that, yeah, that, that's the one thing that really was awesome about the, the last crossover is that it actually felt like a four hour movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like it just it just you straight up. It felt it like, yeah, you movie. could you could binge Absolutely it easily, and you know, which I would watch it as a four hour movie, and you'd be like, oh, this is really fun. About it's like three hours. Oh yeah, yeah it's time, like commercials. Oh, it's like three twenty. It, it was very entertaining, yeah, and exactly. uh, I, I'm glad they're yeah. doing. What am I, I thankful for? I don't know. I don't know your life. I don't know, but all I know is that if you were binging on Netflix, like all of those shows, you got real fucking confused real quick yeah. when you got to that when you got to episode nine. Oh yeah. Because like randomly, all of the other storylines just stop, and then you're in, yeah. you're, you're fighting Nazis, mm -hmm. and then after and then that, the next episode, no one talks about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I mean, I get, you know, you're like, just move on, that was fucking hectic. Raiders went through the roof or whatever the hell, like, it was a massive success, but, yeah. you know, it, it broke oh, yeah. them, so. Yeah. They're human, you know. Yeah, uh, so yeah I think you said you're thankful for Goku, but... Oh, well, well, yeah, I'm thankful, thankful for, for Goku anime. I'm um, thankful for, uh, anime, cool. uh, Death Stranding, probably is gonna come out next year, most likely. Yeah? Yeah, I, mean, I think so. Yeah. We'll see, we'll, yeah, see. we'll I'm, see. I'm looking forward to, to that one, too. I'm uh, grateful for everyone that has donated to my Indiegogo. Which I'll post the link in the description. Yeah, sure. for, for Gene's upcoming short, short film. film. We Gene have plug here. Gene yeah. must plug, yeah, we have 50% raise. Woo! There we go. How, how much is time left? By the uh, time this goes up. Well, you'll have about like two or three weeks if we All extend right. another week. So please donate. Donate. For that, yeah. oh. um, I feel like I'm thankful for like one more thing. Uh, I'm probably thankful for more things too. Oh, Godzilla. Good Godzilla. Godzilla will be coming out. All right. Godzilla King of Monsters? Yes. We both heard very positive things. Yes, about we have. So, so we'll spoil anything. I don't know anything. I just heard very positive things. Yeah. Actually, the last episode of Legends Tomorrow had to do with Godzilla. Oh, was it? It was, uh, they, were, they were with the creator of Godzilla. I'm and not completely Jordan. caught up, but that's very exciting. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really interesting because instead he has a giant squid, mm -hmm. and then Rory's just like, forget squids, lizards. <laughs> he goes, lizards are king. And then you just see him and he's like, king. Yeah. <laughs> king of monsters. Oh, that's great. <laughs> it's, it's really fun. I yeah. think uh, for this year, I think the thing I'm most thankful for is that Orson Welles' final film oh, got completed. That's great. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about Other it a little line. bit. I mean, this episode is going to be kind of all over the place. Uh, right. Holidays, you know, we just, we're going to have a good time and hang out with each other and hang out with you guys. Yeah. And also Raph. Hello, Raph. Um, but I'm really thankful for The Other Side of the Wind because that is Orson Welles' final film, like I said. Uh, it should get nominated and win Best Editing because what they had to do to complete that is un 
fucking some believable. Crazy, yeah, it's some crazy Olympics. So, like, imagine editing that with, like, no input, no notes from the director. No. That would suck. Yeah. And not only no notes from a director, from Orson Welles, who was notorious for piecing together his movies, like, as they were being made. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing. Yeah. Either, oh, my God. <laughs> like, the fact that it's even watchable... It's and amazing. it's my favorite movie of the year is, is which, astounding. Which, what was the movie? What was the it? Other Side of the Wind. Netflix, Netflix. and Frank, uh, producer Frank Marshall from Universal teamed up and finished Orson Welles' final production. Like, the, the thing that was most complete. Because there's, like, a lot of things it's, here and there. It's the sequel to Pocahontas, right? No. 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 It's all the uh, colors in the wind, but it's the other side of the No. Wind. no. <laughs> um, and it's about a director who's, uh, uh, like, a kind of f f fake documentary about a day in the a director's last day of their life and uh, someone who would banish from Hollywood or like exile themselves from yeah, Hollywood. He's a director deal. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to make their big comeback movie. Orson Welles would go to his grave saying this movie was not autobiographical. There's a great documentary to accompany this that's called The Love Me When I'm Dead. And one of the very first topics that everyone hits is that that's bullshit. Like, of course it's autobiographical. Yeah, because he Orson was, Welles just didn't want to be psychoanalyzed, yeah, but of course it's exiled. autobiographical. Yeah. He couldn't make any movies. The parallels between him and like his fictional character are yeah. astounding. Uh, for anyone who understands the term "horny on main," Orson Welles finished his career being horny on main because this is an incredibly horny movie. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. kind of angry and like insane. It feels like a fever dream at times. Yeah, switches from black and white, eight millimeter, sixteen, super thirty-five. It's crazy. Yeah, it it's just like God. But like the way it's cut, like because um, I've seen it. I'm, I'm not going to say how many times. A lot. A lot of times now. Uh, the way it cuts from, from people and like different angles and like the people that are talking sp between specific scenes, if someone's like in black and white and they're like, they're, they're like keeping a certain mood about their dialogue, it'll stay black and white when it cuts back to that person. Yeah. But really when it cuts to someone else who's acting a different way, it'll change catch formats. them with, it'll change formats and like color and stuff. And like, it's that's like a, crazy. Yeah, it's such a breezy film. <laughs> it is. It's like two hours, but it's just like... <laughs> I need to see it. Yeah, I wanted to see it again. I only saw it the, the day of it. Yeah, I haven't seen it. Oh, yeah. dude, it's so good. Right. It's it's unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, Raph, what are you thankful for? I'm thankful for my cat. Your cat? No, I'm no. also thankful for my cat, but sorry. No, <laughs> MTI, I'm doing better, so we're good. All okay. right. And I'm thankful that we have a spare battery, because we need a battery change really quick. Yay! All right. All right. Cool. Time! A word from our sponsors. <laughs> oh, yeah, can, yeah, the audio is rolling, so let's just keep going. Um, after that note, do you guys want to just go into what else you've been watching? This is going to be kind of a shorter episode, so yeah, let's hit up some, some other movie reviews we've been seeing. Uh, Gene, you saw Wreck-It Ralph 2 like five minutes ago before I we saw started. It five minutes ago. Uh, you took, want to get into uh, that? Yeah, I took my younger uh, family over to go see it. I think it's a good movie to take younger kids because they'll be captivated and they won't talk very much, so that's good. But, um, yeah, Wreck-It Ralph, I think uh, I felt the same sentiment you did in watching those trailers. We're like, oh, no, it's yeah. going to be bad. Uh, note that I think all three of us are big fans of the original Oh, yeah, Ralph, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, I saw those, those trailers, and right. I was it like, like the oh, the movie, yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh, no. Like, reference, reference, reference. Yeah, look how great Amazon is. And then fucking Jeff Bezos just sitting on his royal throne of blood, like, yeah. punching a human skull. <laughs> and we're back, kind of. Never left. Just kidding. Yeah, but uh, what? Did, yeah, it was. Um, there certainly were some faults to it. I'll say that it was. I wouldn't say it's too. Um, I wouldn't say it's too referency. But it was like there was like okay, tone it down. Where it's like oh, look at all these Disney characters. <laughs> but like there were cool sequences. The princesses were that was a fun little little scene. And they come back later and they. Yeah, it's a good like. Oh, it's not just there. It's like set up payoff. Yeah, because oh, it's really? like it's That's a good cool. okay. critique of like the damsel in distress or like some of the Disney princess tropes. No, it's not the, I I assume they just shoved everything in there. Just no. To show yeah, th that's good. I mean, like it's not a high bar to expect a movie to have set up and payoff. But considering how said, like few big movies do that yeah. nowadays, it's, that's good to hear. So yeah. baseline quality so, has that. So at one point, does Rick, does does Ralph steal the Millennium Falcon? No, there, there's just like Star Wars characters that are there and they're just around but that's about it my favorite thing about uh like not having seen the movie the the producers being like well we had to take out a kylo ren joke or we nixed a kylo ren joke because we didn't want people to think of him as like a big spoiled brat and it's like what what do they think that character is yeah 
Like, I love Kylo Ren specifically because he's, he's like a that. big he's, angry child. He's not a big, like, bad like Darth Vader. He's he's an angry child. Like, what do what movies do they think they're making? <laughs> oh, my God. But, yeah, it, it had heart, and that was appreciated. And it's not perfect. Not as good as the second one. But it's I think it's a, it's a, it's a fun movie, and it's uh, entertaining. So, yeah. I would recommend it. Uh, what was it? Everybody I've heard that I've seen it, it just keeps on saying that it's a really cute. Yeah, it's a cute movie, yeah. They said, it, they said it's a super cute movie. It didn't give me as, as many feel to the first Dragon Ralph, but... Mm-hmm. You know. well, I, didn't, I don't remember having, like, at, like too many feels in the first Oh, no, Ralph. that, that the, scene where yeah. he's going to sacrifice himself? No, that, that, that got me real like bad. That, and he's okay with, like, everyone, like, thinking he's a villain? Because uh, he loves himself. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's sad. No, that, that got me in the first one. Yeah, it's really sad. Yeah. Dude. I think it made me cry as much as Coco. Coco's sad, though. Yeah, 2017 and 2016 had very good... Uh, like, at least one of the, the Disney movies, each of those years, was, like, amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Gene, you also saw Widows. Yeah, I saw right? Widows. I also saw Widows. You want to introduce it? Yeah. Because um, I know Nick did see. But Nick's going to lead us in a second. I'm not, we're not Nick leaving seen, Nick, Nick out. Seen, Nick, no, they, they, they were just, movies. just like, yeah. I don't know, we're getting the stuff out of the way that Nick hadn't seen, and then Nick's going to lead us yeah. in the final section of the episode. So. I don't, so, I don't, I don't watch movies, it's fine. <laughs> you watch anime. I watch anime. watches anime and all Weeb- the TV. Weeb- and like everything. I watch like a lot of the, t- you know what? I watch too much TV. Yeah, he watches all the TV shows that. <laughs> yeah. and, and now I don't watch like any TV. I'm like so behind on all things I genuinely cared about. So, uh, Widows. See Widows, Widows, new movie. Yes. Widows was a very tight, very well told heist film. It's uh, well directed. I would uh, appreciate nothing. I would uh, expect nothing less from him. And it. Yeah, the actors really shine in it. Like, Viola Davis is great. Um, what's his name? Daniel Kula reminds me of uh, Anton Chigar. Yeah, from No Country for Old Men. Yeah, he has that, like, vibe. Where he's just yeah. like, yeah, that character's scary. He just, like, just murders people. It's, it's like, like he's so almost care. like the Grim Reaper yeah. in the movie. Like, yeah. not a lot of personality, but that's, like, the point. Like, he's there to do a job, and he's going to do it. So, so you you definitely recommend it. Yes, I would definitely recommend it. Uh, I've, had, I've heard a lot of comparisons to Michael Mann's Heat. And I do not find like people. A lot of people have said like, like, oh, this is both this is crime drama. yeah. This is a, a lot of people refer to it like early Michael Mann when he shot on film because a lot of his movies on film are like more acceptable for audiences. So I, <laughs> I honestly thought it was more uh, a piece with his digital work. So it's not like Public like, Enemies or yeah, it's like the one Michael Mann movie. I'm like all the close-ups got to you. Yeah, the but uh, how he uses those the the digital cinematography. Which is odd because Widow's on film, but like how he uses uh, his atmosphere and like the structures that people are like surrounded by, you know, or, like there's like the infamous shots in every Michael Mann movie uh, when there's like a present day or something like that where they're in cars and a lot of like lights reflect off the hood and it looks very beautiful, but he's like texturing the world of like this is the nightlife, is their life, this is where they're most comfortable. Widow's has that, but it's kind of flipped where it's like, like there's this great shot where someone's in a car and the car's driving around these neighborhoods and you see residential like the economic struggle of chicago and how it goes from like not so great to like oh wealthy upper class and this dude's just talking about stuff and it just breezing by him and what he's what he's saying with that shot i think is really powerful yeah it's like, he was this politician this dude who has the power to like make a difference but he doesn't really care that yeah, much he doesn't, you know yeah. i mean he's not like uh i don't know if he's like he isn't terrible but it's like he's a great in movie. a movie full of really awful human beings yeah. he's okay Okay. It's probably worse. Okay people. enough, I guess. It's it's a uh, it's the dumb political ideology of like, well, it's the lesser of two evils. Like he, exactly. he is. Um, yeah. No, I I I fell in love with Widows. That's that's one of my favorites of the year for sure. Uh, oh yeah, and I like the politics of the movie as well. It had a lot to say about the social economical class in, class yeah. in that area. Uh, Elizabeth Debicki is outstanding. So I think yeah, she, she towers. She's I love. I love all the like the lives where she like towers over everyone. Yeah. Oh, she's six. <laughs> I mean, man. Yeah, I know she's six. But like, uh, she's she's the the gold Aisha. high priestess from uh, Guardians too. Yeah, Aisha. Ooh. Yeah, she she's gonna be a superstar, man. Oops. Viola Davis, Dana Kalu, you're right. Great, they're they're the best. But I think she's gonna yeah she's very she's gonna get under people's skin and yeah, be like hey. She remember. also had some good scenes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I also saw a Dragon Tattoo, the Wait, the girl. The, the, the new dragon tattoo story, that one, the spider one with the <laughs> the web yeah, and the Claire, Claire, Claire Foy, one of my yeah. favorite working She's actors. Having today. a great twenty eighteen. Yeah, uh, Unsane is one of my favorite movies of the year. I, I tell it, but I haven't seen First Man yet. She's, She's great in that. Uh, She's one of the great actresses of our generation, I think, and she'll continue think so. to be so. She's good in this movie, but the, the movie's bad. very bad. Oh, uh, man. No, my, you, man, my boy, 
Fede Alvarez. Fede Alvarez is a, has an eye. He knows how to stage action. He knows how to have pacing. But yeah. the writing is so bad. Uh, it feels like it they wanted like, to why make they it like a James the, Bond style yeah. movie. I don't get why they adapted the, the novel that's not even written by the original author either. Because here's what happened. David Fincher and Rooney Mara made, a, I genuinely believe, um, a masterpiece with the original Dragon yeah, Tattoo that they well made. Done, yeah. Or, I guess, remake. And it didn't, like, light the world on fire at the box office. It, it made its money back. But they were like, well, next time I'll make a cheaper one with the whole new people. And poor Rooney Mara, when the Sony emails came out, she was like, hey, I'd love to do another one. Please let me know. And I never did. I'm sorry, Rooney Mara. <laughs> so this is what happens when you replace Rooney Mara and David Fincher. You make a movie like this that no one cares about. I'm well, sorry. No one really saw. No, no. but um, I got even apart from the bias I have to, about that. Of course. It, there's there's just really nothing there. Yeah. You, you're not missing out. Um, exactly. And then the Coen Brothers had a new movie on Netflix, The Ballad of Buster Scruggs, a six part anthology film. It was never gonna be a Netflix series. Yeah, apparently it wasn't, and uh, it's about the old West, but also by deconstructing the old West in these these little short vignettes, it's also kind of commenting about the state of America. Which is very fascinating and it's kind of hard to like talk about without spoiling anything. But uh, just remember the line that Buster Scruggs says early on about if there's no like happy endings or whatever, then what were all the songs about? It's kind of uh, the point. Yeah, yeah, yeah a very I mean, sad movie. It also, is, yeah, it's very, it's very dark. Yeah. I really appreciated that film from like beginning to end. Yeah, even uh, if I wasn't so hot on some some segments. Yeah, some thing. were just like brutally depressing. Yeah, I mean, I can understand why. Yeah, the, uh, there's one called Neil Ticket, and just, yeah. I get people not liking that one yeah. entirely. Uh, also, yeah. shout out to the Coen Brothers' second collaboration with the French cinematographer, Bruno Delbano. He shot uh, Half-Blood Prince. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a fantastic cinematographer, and that guy, usually Westerns are, like, kind of a little more colorful, you know? Like, they'll have a, a simple color palette, but here it's, like, all the saturation's, like, gone. You know, and a lot of these shorts is very, like, eerie and depressing. But some of the stuff will be more lively. It's a very interesting contrast, and I'm, I'm very impressed. One of the best movies of the year. Now, Nick, take us home. What are we talking about next? We're going to be talking about Rocky. All right. Just the Rocky series in general. Leading into a uh, discussion of Creed. But uh, for the Rocky series, have you guys seen all of them? I've seen all, all of them. All I own them. Because yes. I, 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 uh, I just went through all of them recently with my girlfriend because she had never seen any of the Rocky movies. And she wanted to watch Creed 2. She'd never seen Creed or anything like that. So I was like, we're going to make a mission and we're going to go watch every single one. And Like in an afternoon? No, no. We, <laughs> that would be a lot. Like, it's a lot. Like, I mean, we watched... 40 years we of watched, history? We watched three of them in a day. And that was a lot. Like, by the end of it, we were like, holy fuck. Which was that? Which of them? Uh, Rocky 1, 2, and 3. Okay. We finished up. And then, like, and then we watched uh, four... Five, six. So you guys watch like reality slowly, like pull Just back from the franchise. Totally yeah. get ripped. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 they like, did she say anything about like the three thousand pound punch that the Drago has? It's not three thousand pound. What is this? Two, it's one. Uh, which are one thousand eight hundred fifty six. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's basically. I know because I, I know because I just recently watched. <laughs> And, uh, no, she was just like, like as soon as like that scene happened, she's like, "Holy shit, is that true?" <laughs> and I was like, "Well, in this movie, it is." <laughs> it's like he could, like, if he's standing still and like he was putting all his power and like he could potentially like. No, yeah. but she, but she. But it's not like every single punch but, she has is like yeah. a thousand pounds. But the thing is that we, I, oh, I wow. thought, I thought it was a great. I thought Creed two. Did she wait? What did she say about the robot? About the robot? She Happy was birthday, like, boy. Oh, yeah. She was just like, why is this there? Yeah, how much like, cocaine is... in the 80s? Yeah, she was like, why is this take... robot here? Is it? A... She goes, is this a real product? Did you have like, to was take it... to make that robot yeah, but then, in a scene and then in they a were like, movie. Yeah, but they were like, she was like, is this a real product? Like, why is that there? Is it a sponsorship? And, and then, then becomes and then, his girlfriend? Yeah, and then all of a sudden she's like, I think she loves me. So weird. And then she's like, is he fucking that robot? I finally come down with Rocky IV. Because I genuinely... you don't like it? I, I didn't. I appreciate that's it. That's one of my favorites. It's, it's like the favorites. Star Wars prequels to me. Movies that I easily see how they work for people like on a regular movie level. Oh. I, I don't think I'm like I don't think any of the prequels are very good, but they're fascinating to me. Sure. Rocky Four is kind of the inverse of that, where it's like none of the ideas are very strong, but it also ended the Cold War. <laughs> and half of it is like eighty percent of it's montages. Yeah, montages. It's yeah. pure eighties aestheticism. Like yeah, it's super eighties times a hundred. Well. 
what we what we noticed. So it's it's a, it's a cultural icon. What, what I noticed yeah. from the movies though is that the movie which I so you have a better opinion. They, yeah. Well, as they go as they go down until you hit four, they get less in their in their actual like show time. It, like because Rocky one is somewhere near like almost two hours. Yeah. Rocky two is almost the same thing. Three is an hour and. Four. 45 minutes yeah, it's pretty and then Rocky 4 is an hour and 30 mm-hmm. and then well, there's just like no story right? yeah there's no, there's no yeah, story no it's literally you have like he fights he fights Apollo he goes to go train and then he fights the Russian that's that's it and and then once you get to 5 then it goes back up to 2 hours yeah. you know it's, what Rocky 5 actually no miss, Rocky, Rocky, miss 5 is, but... Rocky 5 is also an hour and a half really it's, it's also well, an hour not and a half. lot of story there either you don't you don't, but, you, don't, um, you, don't you don't get another 2 hour Rocky movie until you hit Rocky Balboa it's the first Rocky movie that felt different to a lesser extent. I, I know I know why it's a black sheep of the franchise, but it's it's trying something different. The street fight, I think I don't I don't, I don't mind the street fight. I don't think it's a bad idea at all. That, that was it's, dumb. it's Rocky trying to start to reclaim himself yeah, for the first time outside the ring. Back to the streets. Well, the, and, yeah, the, it's, it's the, flawed for the, sure. The only it's not very good. The but. only thing that didn't make sense out of that entire thing is that why didn't they all get arrested? Well, not only that, but also <laughs> Paul, you know. He just defeated Soviet Russia, man. Yeah, like, that's fine. Kid. Well, not only that, but also, like, Pauly just kind of embezzled all of his money and, like, lost it all. And they were like, just, never, never no one, like, taxes, said anything. And yeah. no one got Pauly in trouble. Like, no yeah. Pauly didn't go to jail. Rocky didn't, well, like, the lawyer him. embezzled all the money. Pauly just gave him power of attorney. Yeah, but it was like, it's like, what the fuck? Like, how did this happen? Like, they were just like, okay with Pauly. Like, yeah, like, I mean, everybody like, was just cool. Like, every, yeah. like, and, like, it, it find out that Polly just like lived with him for like the rest of his life and stuff like that. It was weird, but besides that, I I thought it was really interesting watching these movies and then going into Creed because I, it made me have a deeper appreciation mm-hmm. for the, for those two movies. Yeah. I feel like Creed and Creed Two had a, a more defining portion just because of those because of the movies prior to it because mm-hmm. I just watched them and everything else. Because I have to admit, if you watched Creed Two, you did not watch at least Rocky Four. You're kind of fucking. Yeah, because there's a lot of like, oh yeah, talking about what happened in the '80s, and even in Rocky in Creed too. There's a lot of like them having to tell you what the fuck happened in the '80s of like, oh, oh the yeah, cocaine, like, no one can remember. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, there's a lot of like, oh yeah, like oh well, because he did this, and like it's a lot of like newscasters going like, this is what happened. In, they in have to like before. contextualize how ridiculous the movie. Yeah, and yeah, that. it like they have to like bring it down. Like, oh man, it's like he died in the ring. It's like no one stopped the fight. <laughs> They're like, okay, but Nicole no one stopped th- the fight. Nicole thought it was funny because she was like, why isn't he in jail? Yeah. <laughs> like, and then I was like, well, t- I mean, technically, I mean, in a boxing match, I mean, if you go into a boxing match and he happens to die, like, it, it right. is, kind of, you know, that's kind of like a hazard of the, of the job. And she was like, yeah, but he's on steroids. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's doping. Like, that's cheating. Like, fuck this guy. Yeah. <laughs> like, she got so angry but, at Ivan Drago. Yeah. And I was like, oh. Yeah, he's, well, yeah, he's a- you kind of dig, yeah. and then, um, but yeah, but then, and, but are we going to Creed two? Are we like? Finished? But seeing the uh, which one? Seeing the evolution of Rocky, I yeah, think it's also really. Rocky Balboa is pretty Rocky great. Balboa is like yeah. the, at least it's top a very emotional. Movie. Movie. Which I, actually, I thought the it was drama in that is. I thought it was interesting because Rocky is an he's he's not a better person when he's poor, but he's less like egotistical. Yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah. But even 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 Nicole was like, I, I liked him more when he was poor. Like I, I, like he's kind of a dick. Like when he didn't have a robot. Like, he, <laughs> like he has so much money that he just doesn't know with. He's like, I'm gonna buy a robot for Polly. Yo, we're like, gonna buy a robot. <laughs> <laughs> and everything else. And I thought, so that like, was I'm gonna make my son age seven years between these two movies. <laughs> <laughs> Give him some growth hormones. It's fucking funny, but um, so Creed two, Creed two. What did you think of Creed two? I really liked it. I think uh, which I, 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 it's it's up there. I don't think it, that it's better than. No. Uh, I feel like Ryan, that's a consent. Ryan, yeah, Ryan there's, Coo- there's just no way. I'm Ryan, sorry. which are Ryan Coogler really you know, like captured and job. everything like that. Not only that, but also I I felt it. I felt that the final fight had like this ongoing. It was like it was a good fight, and you you really got the point of it and everything like that. But at a certain point, I actually got confused on what round it was. Yeah, because like they're showing you oh second round, third round, fourth round, and then it's like, like six. Yeah, it's like the sixth round or seventh round, and they don't really like. Kind of, and then like they just stop showing it to you, like what round it is. So you, there's no like, oh yeah, he needs to knock him out in this round right. in order for him to win. Because like some of them are talking, all he needs to do is stay up. But I was like, isn't this like the seventh round? Doesn't he have like three more? 
like five more rounds. Yeah, like, they never it, say like because in boxing it's either like ten or twelve. It's twelve. Yeah. It's, it, 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 they're going for the heavyweight champion of the, of the world. Yeah. It's twelve. We know it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but uh, what was it? And it, it's a it's a big difference because uh, I, I kind of felt like that zapped the the, the tension. Because like, yeah. I didn't know that that was the last round. Like, oh yeah, like he. Because in all Rocky movies, it's like they have this montage of the fight, but like then they go, it's the twelfth round. Now it's time to like get your shit together. Right. Like, need There's to more tension. They, There's way yeah. more tension now because it's like this For is your sure. last chance. And they did that really well in Creed too, where it was like, oh yeah, like you need, which like the last round, you need to go in and knock him down and yeah. stuff like that. And that was exactly. really, that was really cool. I I think Creed two started exactly the way I thought it was going to start with him winning. The, the world championship. I immediately was like, yeah, that's what he's going to do. Yeah, exactly. He's going to win the world championship and that's how it's going to start. I thought it was an interesting idea of going, oh yeah, it's just like, he's still the world champion. He didn't lose it. But he would have lost. Fight, he would have lost, but he get, but Drago gets uh, Drago, Drago cheats, yeah. So yeah. Drago cheats and that's why he's still right. the world champion. I think that's Cheats putting it lightly, I guess. Yeah. yeah, you fucking hit him when he was dead. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's it. You could have killed him. Like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But I, I, I really did enjoy Creed, uh, Creed, uh, Creed Two. Um, I think that it's uh, I, I really want to go see it again. Yeah. Uh, I had a lot of emotion oh, to of it course. and stuff like that. Yeah. I, 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 I really, I enjoyed it. I didn't think it was better than Creed Two. I really liked how they dealt with the mythology of the of the previous franchises, how they expanded on it. Like they made Drago an actual character with wants and needs, and his son. I think he has a good enough arc, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, his, yeah. his son is. His son, his son is. I mean, he's kind of like a one note, and you don't yeah. really know. The only thing is that you know. But what, it you worked. Know what, you know what Ivan wants. You don't know what Victor wants. Right. Victor. It, Victor is kind of like a like a shadow right. of his father. He doesn't. He doesn't have like any wants of his own. He just what he wants is what his father wants. Right. Yeah. And the callbacks to previous films and how they expand on it, I thought it was good. Like you see, you see certain characters again from like Rocky Four, and like oh yeah, they would go this way or. Yeah, she, like, that's what would happen to Ivan Drago, like, you know, during the Soviet Union, they all would have, like, disowned him or yeah, exiled him from, I'm surprised they didn't, like, kill him or, yeah. like, poison him. Yeah, seriously. Like, yeah. could have been, like, Putin that gave him, like, a thing a, that happens in real yeah, life, but in Russia, so. yeah. Um, but I thought, it, yeah, that was interesting, the, the mythology, how there's, like, a blood feud between, like, the Rockies and the Creeds against the Dragos, almost, and it lasted 40 years, and... Like, I think Rocky was, there's a great scene where they're in his restaurant, like, Rocco tells him, like, why isn't there photos of me? And he's like, I, that's not, he, he does, like, he wouldn't have photos of Drago because he doesn't want to remember that fight. Yeah. yeah. And, like, one, because it wasn't, like, oh, this is a memorable fight for him because he's avenging his friend. And mm -hmm. two, like, the things it did to his body, like, it gave him, I guess it gave him some sort of. It, it's, so it's very vague, it's yeah. It's, it's you know, but there's some sort of damage to well, they, yeah, they make they make a thematic connection that the fight broke both of them. Yeah, the, and, the, and, and that's and that's what I really enjoyed the the thematics of the mythology because it's like Drago is almost like an anti Rocky or Bizarro Rocky where he's Bizarro Rocky. Yeah, he's Bizarro Rocky yeah. where it's like he came from some sort of military upbringing, like he was a someone. He came from something and became nothing. And he became nothing, and then Rocky was nothing, and he became yeah, someone, even though. You know, all the ups and downs of Rocky's career, at least he gets remembered, remembered, and he has a statue, and people remember him as an athlete, Drago, not so much. Yeah, because I think, that in, was, I think yeah. in Rocky Five, I think, that's when they mentioned that, like, whatever happened inside the ring versus Drago. Yeah, it's some sort of it, 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 it ends up not it, mattering in the franchise. It, right. But it, it, there was some sort of damage. But I remember, I remember him saying but, like, something but, about the fracture. Yeah, he but can't, he can't besides the, the continuity, I thought that was so interesting that they played that up enough. You know, it could have been way expanded more, but you know, the nods, like, the things that you see, like Drago, just being so envious of Rocky in his life. You see him looking at the statue and all the people that care about him and his career, and like, yeah, he's, of course, he would be jealous because he had nothing. Well, yeah, not only that, but also, I mean, now everybody just thinks of Rocky as like he's kind of like the king of Philly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everybody the knows king, uh, American everybody, hero. Everybody, everybody, yeah, he's an American hero. Everybody knows who Rocky is. Uh, even Tessa Thompson in the very in the first one. Yeah. Was like, which yeah. I, like he didn't even say who he was, and then she just saw it was Rocky Balboa, and he goes like, "What was the big deal?" And she goes, "You didn't tell me that your uncle was Rocky Balboa." Yeah, like, <laughs> like I know who Rocky he's is. Mythology, yeah, he's, he's, he's like, he's, mythology he's, yeah, like he's huge in Philly and stuff like that. And I think that in Russia, like everybody just kind of forgot about Drago. Right. Do you guys and, think it was a mistake to move it out of Philadelphia? I, 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 I wouldn't have thought that initially, but 
watch the movie play out, and there's really no sense of, like, place in this yeah. one. It's like Vegas and then LA. Yeah. And then like, well, the thing is that it's at the first yeah. Creed. I think the the cool part about it was the that city Philly, was alive, yeah. Philly Philly had its own character. Yeah. Philly Philly was. And a th- this movie didn't need to have another place to replace it, but I think because I I was talking to Gene about it before. Like I did like the movie. It's a standard Rocky sequel with better characters than the Rocky sequels had. Mm-hmm. Just, they have stronger yes. motivations. They're realized better. Tessa Thompson has has more to do than. Tragically, Adrian ever did. Yeah. Uh, other than wine and also, stuff. Also, she, she has a much more tragic story. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. And it, it's like, very, who's, who's it's the bare minimum of like good. Yeah. yeah. Of a good movie. And following like what I think is one of the greatest films of all time, I can't help but be a little harsh on that. That's not so much like anyone's specific fault, although I will tragically also blame Sylvester Stallone because I, I think his hands on this franchise at this point in time, it's like, you gotta go, man. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like your your time's up. It, it's not your story anymore. I I think like I wouldn't have wanted him to come back to direct. Uh, no, that yeah. would have been a disaster. I think. Yeah. And I so love Rocky directing. Balboa. Yeah, you almost directed. This I love Rocky Balboa. I think it's a tragedy. It's not his like disaster. story to tell, and I don't think. He Honestly, I think uh, well, because but the thing he is that no, he, for yeah. for you saying that uh, which of the scenery doesn't have a, a character of its own, I think that's just a Ryan Coogler thing, because. Uh, Coogler has a really na- he has a really huge knack of going like I'm gonna give where they're at right a, like, the place a, like a you place. see that in you see it in Black, Black Panther, Panther you see it yeah, in Fruitvale Station yeah you see mm-hmm. it in all these things where like the his environment is also a part of the character and like it's really gonna define who right. he is and there was a, and they mention and they mention a lot in the first creed of like Philly which are Philly fighters the strongest people you know, yeah. growing up at Philly doing this in Philly you know doing all these things like it, Philadelphia was a main staple. And, but the thing is that Apollo Creed is from L.A. So that's the thing that kind of made sense to me. It's like, oh, okay, you trained to fight in Philly, and you've kind of gotten, like, you've been taught by Rocky Balboa and stuff like that. Move, you're going to go back to L.A. because that's actually right. where you're that's from. Where, yeah. Yeah, that's where, which, that's which where again, ideally, from. I think is they actually a good enough. idea. Because I think the beauty of Los Angeles on film is that L.A. is both a place with everything and nothing. Yeah. You can, we can run into people here our whole lives, like, one time, mm-hmm. and never run into them again. Yeah. Just because LA is so big, but oh, also yeah. isolating, you know, and that would have been a really interesting thing to tackle here, and it just kind of, right. kind of forms and doesn't really yeah. do anything. But I will say, director Stephen Capel, he's got a nice eye, uh, mm-hmm. and co-writer Chio Hadari Choker, who uh, was the showrunner Luke Cage, yeah. uh, tragically canceled because season two was amazing. Right. Um, I think they saved the movie. Yeah, I think if, I really if it was Sylvester Stallone did. taking the reins, it, it would have been misguided. I think it focusing was. on the Drago still as. Okay, as solid as the foundation was, I think was misguided. I think Creed needed to move away from the Rocky stuff entirely, if I'm being yeah. honest. Yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, I, I, I think they saved it. Wait, my thing is that I, I liked that they took the, the entire thing in from, okay, I'm fighting for uh, for Apollo. Because that was the huge thing inside of Creed 1, is that I'm, I'm fighting to be Apollo's shadow. And he's fighting to break out of it. I'm trying to break out of it. That's what I mean. End of the world. And, you know? and, and prove that I'm worthy of I'm worthy of this, and I'm not a mistake. And then the second one is ve- is very much like I'm not fighting for anybody else but me. I'm fighting for my family. I'm like this, like me as a fighter. That's who I am. Which is a great idea, but then they don't the, do anything. Being, but the people yeah. that he's fighting against are antithetical to that idea. Right. So it, it's not like no, there's no. Yeah growth from it you know yeah, and, and that, that's a big bummer yeah well, there were a lot of good ideas but they just they were i mean i agree with you to an extent where it's just like man they were like they just missed some stuff yeah but do, yeah. but i mean that's the thing though is that even the, but the ending does show that though is that uh, yeah Dra- i mean it shows drago, Dra- drago has no he has no will to fight spoilers anymore. i guess yeah i mean drago you knew he was gonna win no. come on it's yeah. creed but <laughs> he has no will to fight yeah i mean drago has no will to fight anymore now he's just trying to stay up for his dad like he as soon as yeah. he sees his mom and like the rest of the Russian yeah. like hierarchy, they leave because they never cared because mm-hmm. they never they never gave a shit. You just kind of see him. That's when he puts his arms down and like he's just taking punches over and over again. Mm-hmm. And then it's that moment where Drago has to face the same decision that Rocky did, where it's like, do I do I surrender? And he and he loses this, and he may hate me for the rest of his life, or do I? And, and, yeah, and he loved his son. Or do I? Or uh, do I let him fight? And yeah, and you know what? Die. Uh, throwing the towel. That was a good decision. Best decision they could have made out of that yeah. fight. Hands down. I wish there was some sort of, like, resolution with him and, like, Adonis or Rocky. Like, there could have been, like, one more scene with that and where, like, I don't know, you see that 
Drago changed or something, like he feels yeah. regret. There, there need to be but more. Really, Again, yeah, it's like, the baseline minimum of yeah, was, a solidly good movie. That was yeah. good enough. There's nothing wrong with that. There's no. nothing wrong with that. There know? isn't, I, but I it could have been... It could have been great. Yeah, it could have been great. But I, I still recommend people check it out, especially if you're a Rocky fan. If you're a Rocky fan, you got to go see it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. For uh, me, as just a wrapping huge... wrapping up. we got to wrap up now? But for me, as a huge Rocky fan, I definitely recommend it. Go check it out. Watch Watch Rocky Four before going to go see it. You're going to see a couple of things that, like... Callbacks, like, yeah, sure. and like nice callbacks and stuff like that that you may not have seen in other movies and everything, uh, which I, if otherwise or anything else because you know it's been a long time since so yeah, I've yeah. seen it. Um, but yeah, I I recommend it. I want to go see it again. Of course. Yeah, uh, Gene, where can people find you? Uh, Gene nine eight nine two Twitter and Instagram. Go to Indiegogo zero s to donate if you want. All right, Nick. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, uh, Nick Valero. You can also find me on Twitter, the Nick Valero, and also make sure to subscribe and. Pay, and Put you in on our Patreon, Waffle Press. Yes, please. Uh, D E W G O Waffle on Twitter, Waffle Press, YouTube, SoundCloud, like, subscribe, check out Patreon again. Uh, click that stupid fucking bell to make sure that you don't miss our videos because YouTube <laughs> is run by idiots. Thank you for watching. We have been professionally unprofessional. Rap.